Have people thought about why there is this need for people to feel consistent in themselves? You know, that to act in a way like to, to that, that this can, that this inconsistency causes this tension that then, that then leads us to look for a, you know, to either change our, our minds about things or act in different ways. Yeah. I think there's a worldview that people um, do and should act consistently, that things fit together, that we don't do things that we don't believe unless we're a bad person. So uh, a good and worthy person, whether it's, you know, yourself or the people in your environment, you, you expect them to act with consistency. You expect them to act um, in, in a way that matches their attitudes, that matches their goals, that matches their, their previous behaviors. It would be a chaotic world if, you know, people uh, use you know, one set of principles in one case and then seem to violate them in the next case. Um, right. It'd be a very chaotic world. And so I think to create stability in the, in, in the world that we live in, um, we prefer consistency over inconsistency. And I think we learn as we grow up that to behave inconsistently is, uh, to use a, a non-scientific word, simply bad. You know, mm -hmm. and people don't like you when, you when you behave inconsistently. They question you when you behave inconsistently. And so that I think, you, you know, as you grow up, you reinforce the belief in yourself and you help reinforce it in others that people should do what they believe, believe what they say, um, act consistently over time and modality. Now, we know that we actually don't much of the time, and that's why I get to study so many of the times that we, that we don't act consistently. But our, but our striving, our desire to act consistently, I think is, as I say, part of, part of the human condition and part of what we expect from right. ourselves and other humans. It would be interesting to see at what ages people are more likely to be subject to dissonance, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. as a learning phenomenon, perhaps, or maybe it's just innate, maybe, maybe even, even small children, you know, are able to, are able well, to. Well, there is work, there is work with small children and that's, um, you know, it's, it, it's difficult to run children, to, to study children in experiments in which they behave inconsistently. Um, but it's been done and they do find it in children as young as three and four. Um, they, with a, with a, with a little grain of salt have also found it in uh, monkeys. <laughs> and it's, pre it's pretty hard to study as, monkey as one behaving does. consistently. But <laughs> monkey you know, change their attitude you want, a bit. You want, like, perhaps you want them to vote libertarian all the time, the monkeys. Um, <laughs> no, but, I, but, but there are, there, there are, uh, interesting um, studies that 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 have actually looked at how monkeys seem to try to preserve their um, their consistency and um, yeah, not, not with a rating scale, but I can describe one for you if sure. you like. Yeah. Okay, so they 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 got some monkeys. I don't remember the um, breed of monkey, but very intelligent monkeys. And they had the monkeys um, behaviorally rate <laughs> different color uh, toys. And I say behaviorally rate because they put the toys out in front of the monkeys with, uh, with, different, with different colors. And the monkeys express preferences for the, for the colors. They're more likely to go after one color than, than another. And each monkey may pick a different color, but they're consistent, right? So monkey A, likes red better than yellow and yellow better than green. Um, if you then give monkey a choice between their favorite um, color and their second favorite color, they pick the favorite color. No, no problem there, right? Now, humans, when we do that, we haven't talked about this yet, but when, when we humans make a choice between one color and another color, one candy and another candy, um, one car and another car, two things happen. We love the choice after we make the choice. We love that choice. We say we picked the, we made the best choice possible because it is the best item I've ever had. 
I'm extremitizing, of course. And the one that I didn't choose, you know, the one I almost chose, but I didn't choose? Awful, terrible, all kinds of features that I, I should have realized. And, I, I, and, and so after we make a choice, there's a human phenomenon, very well studied in the laboratory, where the item you chose becomes even better liked than before you made the choice, and the item you rejected becomes trashed or disliked um, much more than, than before you made the choice. Now let's go back to the monkeys. So the monkeys picked, let us say, the, the green as their favorite, and they rejected the yellow. Okay. Now we give the monkeys a choice of the yellow and the red. Yellow was their second choice. Red was their third choice. But then they just rejected the yellow a moment ago, right? They just rejected the yellow. They picked the green in, in the fourth choice. So we think they'll love the green, but now they don't like the yellow. And now when you give them a choice between the yellow and the red, what do they pick? Okay, chance, chance to make the prediction. What did the monkeys, what did the monkeys? I guess they picked the choose? red. They chose the red. So That's interesting. You know, yeah. this, and this is just what humans would do. Right. And we would describe the human behavior as the resolution of, of cognitive dissonance. Right. And, and the people who did that study did exactly the same study with three and four year old children using huh. the And the same so, thing happens. And the same thing happens, yes. So that, is, that's uh, really that now there aren't a lot. There is no other study that I know of that you, that dealt with monkeys, uh, and there are a few studies that have dealt with preschool children using a slightly different method. But it looks like it's there with with young children. That's um, so that has so many implications, right? The idea that you can, if you wanted somebody, if, if you wanted someone to pick a third choice, and you knew that they weren't going to get their first, but that they were going to really hold on to their second, but you want them to have you want them to actually pick the third, then you need to give them the choice first between the first and the second. They they pick the first, but you explain why they can't have the first. Then they can choose between the second and the third, and they're more likely to pick the third. If you enjoyed that segment and you'd like to watch another, click here. And if you'd like to watch the full episode, click here.